In this Pearson Work Holding Q&A, we're doing a one year later analysis of a head head between the Haas ST30Y versus the Doosan 220 LSY. Let's get started. So here we are. Uh, I've done a previous Q&A on Haas versus Doosan, kind of weighing out uh, the, the, uh, the question that I got, um, should I go Haas or Doosan? At the time, I didn't own a Haas lathe. I do now. I've owned it for about almost a year now. And so I can give a real, uh, a more accurate head-to-head -head comparison. Now, when I did the original uh, comparison, I, was familiar with Haas lathes. Uh, different, I had filled in at different shops uh, over the years as I was uh, starting to build my business. And so I had run Haas lathes, very familiar with it, um, seen them at plenty of uh, customer shops. And, and uh, because of the Haas control, I'm familiar with that. So um, in this one, we're gonna take my Haas ST30Y with a bar feeder and put it head to head against our Doosan LSY220. Uh, so pros and cons, let's get started. Number one, the Haas control, of course, is a pro, especially for me as a Haas owner, okay? So the mills have a control, the lathe looks like identical. I'm gonna say there's maybe four to six buttons that are different. So for me, it was instantly familiar. And the Haas control is just actually pretty intuitive. I've told this story before, when, when I started um, training with the technician when we got the, the deuce on lathes, I walked away after a few hours because the control just seems so unintuitive. Now, in their defense, uh, our second deuce on lathe, the 220 LSYC, has an easy operator package, EOP, that has a different interface that I think it's more user-friendly. Um, I never dug in that deep. My guys don't use that. They use a standard Fanuc uh, or Fanuc, whatever you want to say, interface. And to me, it's just, it just kind of, it just drives me nuts. I was actually um, stepping in to uh, do a bar change or, or, or start a machine up on a morning when one of my guys was gone and I couldn't get the, the display to show me what I wanted. We ended up doing a, a, a call on our phones and I'm like, I would have never thought about that combination of buttons. So again, the Haas control, total pro. I'm gonna go with that every time. When it comes to controls, the Haas is tough to beat. Chalk that up as a win in the Haas pros section. Now, the next pro is not Haas versus Doosan. It's that our Haas has BMT 65. The Doosan has BMT 45. The size difference is significant. The type of cut you can take is significant but you're not going to take a heavy cut with live tooling. What is significant is the clearance around it. The Doosan is, uh, just because it's a smaller turret, everything is pretty tight and the clearance issues, it's, it's nerve wracking when you're doing a setup. You're looking all around, making sure everything clears. When you have a BMT turret, a BMT 65 turret, everything is just more spread out. Suddenly things are scaled up and it's just a little bit more comfortable to run. So no matter what the brand, I would recommend BMT 65 over 45 any day. Us machinists always love to say clearance is clearance when we got just a few thou to spare, but just wait until you crash it. More clearance is always better. Another pro for the Haas is the Haas bar feeder. Now the control is easy and the integration with the control and the bar feeder is seamless. It's a easily navigated menu of just walking through linear steps of setting up the bar feeder and it walks you through graphically. Now I've never been around a, like an LNS bar feeder that's typically goes with a deuce on lathe, but from what I've heard, there's, there are different brands, there's some communication that has to go on. And I do know of customers and shops where they just throw up their hands and go, we'll deal with it later, feed bars manually until we can really get it ironed out. So the Haas bar feeder, uh, staying within brand, 
It's so easy, we love it, it just runs great. As my friend John Saunders recently said, a bar-fed lathe is about one of the easiest things you can do to automate production in your shop. Number four, I would say that this Pro is something that I kind of bought into thinking it would be a con, but the Haas has been really thermally stable. I thought that I would be chasing thousands from the morning to the afternoon, hot day, cold day, the most I've seen um, vary is about eight tenths, maybe a thou. Uh, if we're going from very cold, it's been sitting, we had a cold weekend, and then Monday morning we have a heat wave roll into Southern California. Um, and so the shop is still cold, we roll up the doors, change the, the temperature. Uh, we don't have a big temperature fluctuation, of course, being Southern California, we're never in freezing temperatures. And it's really rare that we experience uh, 100 degree days and especially 100 degrees in the shop. We're not climate controlled, our next facility will be. But yeah, the most I've seen it where we just get it um, up to uh, its right, um, yeah, it's, I can't say it's temperature, but it's a, just a stable operating range is maybe 30, 45 minutes where the spindle starts, you know, um, putting some, some electrons through it and it, it gets to its happy medium. And then we chase those first maybe five, 10 parts, adjust, and then we get into a nice flow. We walk away pretty much for the rest of the day. Um, we have a system that alarms us or, or alerts us to check it every about 50 parts. And maybe the guys are setting offsets maybe like maybe a 10th or two. Um, now this is not a knock against Doosan. In the other column is not a con. The Doosan has always been a well-built machine very thermally stable. It's just that the Haas is remarkably stable compared to the Doosan. That caught me off guard. That's a very happy pro in my column for Haas. All right, so in editing this, we actually discovered something else about the Haas control. It has thermal compensation in a startup. So where it takes, you put in a, a block of time, we have it set to one hour, and you tell it how much it varies in that amount of time. Ever since we've done that, it's even been more accurate than we anticipated. So lesson learned on this one, don't always talk like you're an expert when you haven't had a lot of time on stuff. Hint, hint, message boards, anyone? Now the next pro that we love for the Haas Barfeld lathe is that it has an auto arm. Now I'm sure you can probably get an auto probe arm for the Doosan. Now when I say auto arm, that's the arm that folds down, you touch the tools, this allows us to walk away overnight and it can adjust offsets. It can check for uh, insert breakage or wear. And so our Doosan doesn't have that. It's a manual probe that needs to be folded down. You touch it off and you put it back. Uh, the, our Haas ST30Y allows us to literally load dozens of bars in the bar feeder and walk away and probe and just create great parts, lights out, for days and days and days, especially once we're up to temperature. Don't overlook the little things. Had this not had an auto arm, we would not have been able to run lights out production with total confidence. And finally, always a pro in the Haas column is the upfront pricing. Now you can go on the Haas website and see what every machine starts at. Um, I don't think I've ever paid list price for a Haas machine. Uh, whether it's um, adding a bunch of options that qualifies for a discount, or Haas, it seems like they're always running different specials or deals, and so at least you know your starting point. Now, this didn't happen, what I'm gonna say did not happen with Doosan, uh, but I've heard multiple stories of machine brands like a dealership quoting the identical machine to two different shops at prices that were like four, like five figure differences because one shop was a big shop, another was a startup. Now, if a dealer wants to give a deal, that's, that's fine. But for me, I just wanna know, especially for my customer base, that when I buy a Haas, that my customers also pay the same price or if I get it on sale, that same price is available to them. Just like Pearson Workholding, we don't sell through distributors, we sell upfront on our website 
and so everyone pays the same price. I just think that's a more fair and trustworthy pricing model. Um, so our, our dealer around here is Ellison. Uh, they've always been a great uh, dealer for us, but you always kind of wonder if you're getting the best price because you don't know the price until the salesman walks in and sees your shop. That's not the case with, with Haas. You know where your starting price point is. Never be afraid to do a gut check. If you're not sure about the price, shop around to get a fair market value. So let's hop over to the Doosan and let me talk about some of the pros. Now, the first thing is the Doosan lathes are, first of all, of course they're well built, but they are quiet. Our Haas lathe is loud. Uh, it, when you measure it with a decibel meter, it is undeniable. Now, I always know when the Haas lathe is running because it's screaming and howling. The Doosans, I have to look up out of my office, which I'm only behind a thin pane of glass to see if it's running or not. I suppose you could see it as a pro and con because if it weren't running, you know, you wouldn't know that it stopped. But I like uh, just a comfortable working environment and how quiet these machines are is awesome. Now the sub spindle in the Haas is whisper quiet. It's just the main spindle is belt driven and um, Haas lathes have always been notorious for being on the loud side. Don't overlook the little annoyances. What you bring into the shop will eventually affect you whether you realize it or not. Now, the next pro I would say for the Doosan is all the bells and whistles, the advanced technology that comes with it. For example, um, the, it has a, a G350. That is a code for part off detection. So when the main finishes and the sub comes in and grabs it, you have the parting tool that separates it. You call up a G350, which starts to pull the two parts, well, the, the finished part. If the sub spindle, the B axis, um, if it senses a higher load than normal, it will alarm out and uh, alert the operator that maybe the part didn't separate. We've never had a problem with this. We've never um, had any broken tools or issues where it didn't detect that. That is a definite pro that the Haas's don't have. We absolutely love it. It makes us sleep better at night. The other thing would be the true interpolating sub spindle of the Doosan. Great pro uh, in my opinion. So the, the Haas has what's called a finishing spindle. You can, you can actually, it doesn't do interpolation. It can do spindle orientation so you could orient it and do some radial drilling, but it doesn't do like full interpolating C. There's a few parts that we make on the, the Doosan that require the main and sub to interpolate the part. So again, it's a bell and a whistle that is a big deal. Now, the other thing would be the difference between the parts catchers. The Haas parts catcher is simply a, a ramp that goes out, tilts, and then the sub spindle spits it out and it goes down a ramp and into kind of like a box on the front of the door. What's unique about the Doosan is it has an actual cup that comes up, catches it at any position where the bee is located. So it can be close to the, the main, it can be all the way back at its home position, it can still catch it, but then it goes, uh, actually it needs to go to the B home position to drop it off. Um, the, we haven't run into this, but the Haas needs to go spit it out at the position of the parts catcher, and which is where it's positioned at the door. It's the other way around. I prefer the Doosan to drop off wherever, or to pick up the part wherever the sub spindle is located. Now along those lines, where it drops it off, the Haas will drop it off at the door, like I said, in that box, and it's just a big, dumb box. The Doosan will drop it off into a hopper that then puts it on a conveyor. Now, this is nice because it gives the parts enough time to kind of dry off as they travel down the conveyor. Um, also, when you are parting off um, a part, you are spraying against the door. Well, actually all the, the operations, the Haas is spraying at the door 
And then inevitably when you go to open it up because the, the box is located near the main spindle, it just gets filled up, uh, filled up with coolant. It does drain off, but chips, all that stuff that's stuck to the door is gonna go right into the box. Because the drop-off point for the Doosan is near the subspindle, you don't get as much, I don't know, like chips and coolant uh, building up. Um, then when it does get down on, at the end of the conveyor, it drops it into a box, which an operator or one of my assembly guys can just pick it up there and they don't have to stand in front of the machine. Now this would actually be a big deal if you had a robot. You would not want to be getting parts out of the box when the robot is active. So this takes the parts out of the way. Definitely a pro for the Dusons. Another pro is the thought that went into the sub spindle. So it's not just a full interpol interpolative sub. It actually has two things that we really miss on the Haas. Number one, a full part pusher. So after you finish your part on the sub and you go to catch it, it has a part pusher that goes all the way out. Now this is not just a dumb pusher that's pneumatically operated. It is smart. If it goes out and say the collet got jammed up with chips and it couldn't fully push it out, it knows that it didn't meet its full extension and it will alarm out and say, hey, I couldn't get the part out of the collet. And so this is a huge thing when it comes to reliability. The other thing is it has sub spindle washout so you can give it an M code and it runs coolant out of the sub spindle to wash out any coolant, uh, any chips or any, anything that really builds up. Uh, both machines have blow off nozzles on both the main and the sub, but man, when you can wash out chips, it's just so much more reliable, definitely a win for the Doosan. Now on the subject of that sub spindle, another pro for the Doosan is that it has a break on the sub spindle. Now this is, you wanna lock your spindles when you're doing milling. Um, you can, if you, if you locked it, you could do uh, XY milling on the sub, but the nice thing about being able to lock the spindle is when you're taking chucks, whether it's a three jaw or a collet chuck on and off, you lock those spindles and you can really put some torque into those bolts. We can't do that with the sub spindle on the Haas. Yes, it does lock in place, but it's the servo locking in place, not the spindle. So you would never lock it with the servo and crank on some bolts to take a, a, a chuck on or off. It's just one of those nice things. You just lock it, you know it's safe. Um, it, you can't spin it while it's locked. It will unlock itself in a turning application, but it's one of those quality of life issues that we just really love. What are options for one machine? may be built-in standards for another. And finally, I would say that the lighting in the Doosan is much better than the Haas. Now the light for the Doosan is right above the main spindle and it is shining in the work area. The Haas ST30Y, this may not be the case with all Haas machines, but it was all the way back in the, the far right corner. Uh, when I talked to the Haas engineer, said, okay, if that's a problem, you can actually move it forward. I did move it forward. I relocated that, uh, I think it's a 20 watt LED bulb, but still, it, there's still shadows. It would be best if that light were right above the cutting area. Again, it's not a big deal, but it's a quality of life issue that I just want Haas to fix. There should be an LED light shining right down. The nice thing is Haas being about 40 minutes from our shop in particular, they're very responsive. They get the advantage of being a domestic manufacturer. And so, you know, if I think enough people mention it, it does get into the next cycle. And uh, I've never bought two machines, two mills that are a year apart that look identical. There's always improvements. So that's one of the things that I would say is nice about Haas. It's a con right now for the lighting for Haas, but it's a pro that I can reach out to the factory and say, hey, I'd really like the light in a different spot we'll probably add another light, hack the system, put it in exactly where we want it. Now we were able to move our light, but if you find yourself in a more complex problem, don't hesitate in reaching out to the manufacturer. So in a nutshell, I would say that you can't go wrong with either machine. Now on both sides of the aisle, there are individual machines that have problems. Like for example, my 220 LSY, 
it blew out a turret bearing at month 14 and it was out of warranty, 12 month warranty. The parts were covered, the labor was not. Man, that irked me, it still irks me to this day. But I totally, I, I, it wouldn't be a, 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 such a hindrance where I would totally write off Deuce on. Mistakes happen, we actually love mistakes. I embrace mistakes, they show us some areas we need to get better and as long as you're not attaching an emotion to failure and you're attaching solutions and making things better, mistakes are your best friend. They serve you far better than success. So I would say that both machines are great. Uh, they produce great parts. Honestly, we, run, we can run uh, the same part on both machines, look at them, and we would never know which one was made on the Haas and which one was made on the Doosan. So if you like this content, consider subscribing. This is a channel for machinists that wanna do things better in life. So once you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you can be one of the first to catch our content. So until next time, go innovate your production.